हरे कृष्णा हरे दोस्तों स्वागत है आपका एक और इंटरव्यू में प्रेव के साथ आज का इंटरव्यू कुछ स्पेशल है हमने कितनी बार अपनी लाइफ में सुना है कि इस व्यक्ति की अमेरिका जॉब लग गई या ये व्यक्ति अब्रॉड सेटल हो गया दोस्तों हम जब ऐसी चीज़ें सुनते हैं अपनी लाइफ में हमारा फर्स्ट इंस्टिंक्ट यही होता है हम सोचते हैं कि वाह वो कितना सक्सेसफुल हो गया अपनी लाइफ में हम में से काफ़ी लोग तो ऐसे भी होंगे जिनका शायद सपना होगा बाहर अमेरिका या किसी और कंट्री में जाके सेटल होना अच्छा और दूसरी साइड हमने कितनी बार ऐसा सुना है कि कोई व्यक्ति पूरा जो अमेरिकन लाइफ का कम्फर्ट है वो छोड़ के इंडिया आ गया और एक सिंपल लाइफ बिता रहा है यहाँ पे हो सकता है एक दो बार ऐसा सुना हो लेकिन काफ़ी यूनिक है ये आज के जो हमारे गेस्ट हैं वो ऐसे ही एक विदेशी हैं वो अमेरिका में ही वॉज बॉर्न इन अमेरिका एंड फॉर द लास्ट थ्री इयर्स ही हैज़ बिन लिविंग इन मायापुर धाम मायापुर धाम जो महाप्रभु का धाम है अपनी कंट्री का कम्फर्ट छोड़ के अमेरिकन लाइफ का कम्फर्ट छोड़ के वो मायापुर धाम में रह रहे हैं और एक सिंपल लाइफ बिता रहे हैं अभी हम उनसे बात करेंगे आई एम श्योर आपके मन में बहुत सारे क्वेश्चन उठ रहे होंगे कि भला कोई क्यों अमेरिकन लाइफ स्टाइल का कम्फर्ट है जिसे ज़्यादातर इंडियन चेस करते हैं वो छोड़ के इंडिया में आके एक सिंपल लाइफ स्टाइल लीड करेगा तो ऐसे बहुत सारे क्वेश्चन की हम चर्चा करेंगे मिस्टर जोई के साथ हुज इनिशियटिव नेम इज़ जय कृष्ण प्रभु सो हरे कृष्ण जय कृष्ण प्रभु वेलकम टू ब्रेव वेलकम टू आर इंटरव्यू हरे कृष्ण So I'm sure our viewers are having a lot of questions in mind, mm -hmm. and it's a very unique experience for them to mm -hmm. see uh, a Westerner following Indian culture. Mm -hmm. But first things first, I would I would like to ask you like, how do you introduce yourself for our viewers? How would you introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Jai Krishna Das, and after meeting the Iskand devotees. I saw that they had something that many people are searching for. So now I'm trying to follow the Vaishnav culture because I was very intrigued and interested in what they had. Mm -hmm. Like this. No? Now I'm here in Mayapur trying to pursue that that goal and achieve that uh, that inner peace everybody is searching for. That's that's very interesting and inspiring. Mm -hmm. So you said that you felt that Iskon devotees have something which everybody is looking for. Mm -hmm. So can you just explain that further because it's a very profound statement mm. put in a very few words. Okay, I I can explain it mm -hmm. uh, how I heard. So uh, according to the scriptures, it says that one who is trying to satisfy this body, which the body means the senses, yes, mm -hmm. right. But the, the senses can never be satisfied. So in America, there's a lot of uh, place for gratifying the senses. Big lights, uh, maybe nice restaurant, nice car, nice watch, nice clothes, nice home. So many nice things, but it's only gratifying the bodily needs. And people are forgetting the essential necessity of life, and that is to give food for the soul, the necessities for the soul. And therefore, people in America are not satisfied. They're actually dissatisfied. Even after having so many nice things, they are still not finding satisfaction. And, uh, but when I met the devotees, they had so little, they were living very simple life. But yet, I, said, I, I saw that they had something that I did not have. And I, I felt like I was having a lot. So I said, well, what do they have that I don't? And they said, Krishna consciousness. <laughs> I said, okay, I tried that. Uh, I cannot help but ask that who brought you to India? Who brought? And me to also, do you have any plans of returning back to America anytime soon? Well, uh, how I got brought to India? Uh, who brought me to India? So basically, uh, after meeting the devotees, I was there in the temple and, and staying with them, and I was finding that uh, actually this lifestyle is actually something substantial. So then, usually someone who is interested in something, they want to progress further and further. So then, as I was progressing further and further, I got invited to India by, uh, uh, how do you say, life partner, there you go. Uh, she invited me and asked me to come to Mayapur Dam, India, West Bengal, uh, the birthplace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and to reside here and follow the instructions of spiritual master and guru and try to live our life here. So I agreed and then I came and then I 
now somehow or another by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy and staying here. And so do you have any plans of returning anytime soon? Plans of returning? Uh, personally, no, but for visa purposes or for, uh, you know, like mm. mostly visa or passport purposes. But we like it here. It's much better, much peaceful. Mm -hmm. So for the last three years, you have been living in Mayapur Dham, mm. which is also known as, as you mentioned, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Dham. Mm. So, yeah, I can see around. It's a beautiful place. Yeah. Can you, uh, can, you ex can you tell for our viewers what is so special about this Mayapur Dham? Well, as I've heard from Agur Maharaj, he says that if one comes to Mayapur Dham, he can make thousands of times more advancement doing anything spiritual here in the line of Sri Prabhupada that the Prabhupada has given us. And if we can make thousands of times advancement if we stay here and do spiritual bhajan uh, sarana, uh, 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 and that this place is most special. Or out of India, West Bengal is very special, and out of West Bengal, Mayapur is most special. And Mayapur is so special out of the whole universe because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu inaugurated this uh, Sankirtan movement. And, and it is uh, the prime benediction for humanity at large. Because it's, it's, it's giving something very rarely achieved, but everyone is searching after. Mm -hmm. So I think you, you have a very nice exposure of both the worlds. Hmm. You have seen both the worlds. Hmm. Uh, how, so how, uh, my question is how your life was over there in, when you were in America hmm. and how it is right now, how does it compare to what it is right now? Well, and I, I can say that uh, in America there may be a lot of facility and comfortable life, but Comfortable life and facility for uh, material comforts and economic development, uh, high position and, and money. This is not meaning happiness because even people in America who are very wealthy, they are dissatisfied, they're, they're not happy. They're simply smiling because they're getting money, but that's not real happiness. And, and, and even even millionaires, they're taking their own lives, they're committing suicide. So this is proof that actually these material comforts and this money is not the cause of our happiness. But actually there's a saying that says more money it equals more problems. But people are, have this idea that money is, is creating more happiness. But this is just, and this is heavily propagated in American culture. Mm -hmm. right. But here I find that even the most poorest man who maybe has one set of cloth, and he, but he still takes bath three times a day, he's clean, he's healthy, and, 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 and he, he, he believes in the next life, so he does good. And they are happy. A man who, who, who maybe eats one time a day, he is happy. He is sufficient because he lives a very simple life. He doesn't have so much stress, so much anxiety. He doesn't have to take prescription pills. Uh, maybe some statistics are there of how many Americans are taking prescriptions <laughs> for anxiety and tension. <laughs> and so, but, but here you won't find so much in that. The prescription is chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Hare. I'm sure many people would be wondering how your lifestyle is over here right now hmm. and how you are managing your expenses. Hmm. Uh, like, what do you do for a living? Hmm. So uh, I've been staying here for a little time with my wife Lali Devidasi and uh, we're actually trying to teach in the school and uh, this Gurukul here, international Gurukul. So we're making a uh, little uh, maintenance there to sustain us. Not much but it's enough to, uh, you know, maintain and get what we need, the necessities of life. and. Uh, Prabhupada made Mayapur for Westerners to come and live a simple life like that. So we're trying to follow that and if we follow Prabhupada then we get the mercy of Prabhupada. That's, that's very inspiring. That shows uh, like your sacrifice for devotion life. And it's really, really inspiring for anyone who has been brought up in this culture. It's also pleasantly surprising for Westerners to be taking up our own culture. Mm -hmm. So how is it like teaching in the Gurukul? What do you, what do, you do? What I never do? thought I would be a teacher. But I like it. I'm like a big child myself, so I like to joke, I like to goof off. <laughs> but it's also a nice uh, uh, platform to try to uh, uh, preach Krishna consciousness because the children we preach to are also devoted children. And, and it's, it's nice to have the interaction with them because they really are special children. We like the service a lot. 
-hmm. It's a very nice service, and and uh, it's never a dull moment. I tell you that. <laughs> it's very like the children are very intelligent, and every day it's like a new thing happening. Mm -hmm. So it's very nice. We like it. So staying in staying in India and Mayapur for a long time, have you picked up on some Hindi or some Bengali? Hindi, toro toro, toro toro toro. Dekhiye, dekhiye Bhagavad Gita, dekhiye exo rupee, rupee. But in Bengal they say taka, taka. Yeah. And then uh, Lali, she likes to distribute uh, Prabhupada's books. It's, it's, you get a lot of benefit. Uh, mm -hmm. Rumor says it's the highest service to uh, uh, distribute to Prabhupada's books. And so by doing that, we ha have to distribute Bengali books and speak to the Bengali people. So we picked up on a little Bengali. Uh, uh, Hare Krishna, Abni Ke Mona Chen. Ami Kup Balo. My poor Balo Lage. And they, they like this. And then you can say that uh, one, one thing that really strikes them is that Ek din means one day at the Sharia, this body shesh will be finished. Wow. Okay. And you say so, so, so. Then uh, they say like this, yeah. So you say this book is at the boy samodan, a solution to this this samosha, at the samosha, this problem. Mm -hmm. This is big problem. So then they're like, oh yeah. And then we give them, you show them beyond birth and death, show the proper books, and they look at it, and we explain a little bit further. Uh, as much Bengali as we can scrape together, <laughs> and and they, they like, they take. So this is more of a service that you're doing for people over here. Yeah, yeah. We, distribution. Oh yeah, it's 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 it's, it's volunteer service. It's mm -hmm. not a business. Many people think that we're there and they try to bargain with us, but we're simply trying to do a service. We do it in our free time. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if it was a business, then we wouldn't have come to India and tried to distribute books for 25, 30 <laughs> rupees. That we would have stayed there. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. <laughs> Many people ask this, and I say, ah, why do you think we're here? <laughs> and then it, but it, it strikes their mind, it makes them wonder, like, like, I mean, like, previously I was making 280,000 rupees in one month. And now I'm here selling, trying to sell this man a 30 rupee book. So I say, why, why am I standing here when I went from that to this? Why am I? Because something is here. Mm -hmm. That is why. So you ask yourself, do, do you, do, you have to ask yourself, what is it? Sumerasa, do you have intelligence? You, you see. <laughs> then you get the book, you let them read it a little bit. And then they, they like, okay, then they take sometimes. And they get benefit. So there's like some higher taste which you're getting by doing the service. I can't say that I, I, I'm experiencing such a high taste, but, but it says in the Bhagavad Gita, Pramvidrista Navarta, by one who experienced something higher, they can give up the old habits. Mm -hmm. So I'm in the practice of trying to give up my old habits that I picked up in the Western culture, mm -hmm. that now the Indian culture is now trying to pick it up. They're like, oh, it's so nice, it's glorious, I want to pick it up. But these habits are bad habits, it's rascal habits. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just producing more uh, anarthas, unwanted things in the mm -hmm. heart. Right. And it's not, it's not good culture. But this Vaishnav culture that these Indian people had is very good. And, and it's, it's, it's sublime and it's very peaceful life, simple life, it's nice. Uh, I have to mention at this point that th there is a small set of people in India who thinks that uh, the society is gone that you mentioned. Mm. Uh, this was started in, in America mm. and uh, it's like a business that they're opening temples and they're, uh, you know, taking money and sending it to America. Mm. Uh, this, is, this is something which is very common on the internet. Mm -hmm. I've seen it myself. Mm. So what would you like to say about this? No, no, it's kind of probably established it in America, but it's not an American institution. It's an international society for Krishna mm -hmm. consciousness. If it was American, it would say national <laughs> society for Krishna consciousness. Okay. But it's international. So mm -hmm. it's all, all, all grades of people all over the world, poor, rich, uh, intelligent, non-intelligent, black, white, African, everyone is coming. There's no, there's no uh, sectarian or specific uh, uh, type of person that ISKCON is for. It's for everyone. All living entities. So one final question. Yeah. I'm sure when you were in your childhood, like you never even heard about Indian culture or Indian, uh, you know, gods or Krishna to be specific. Yeah. And uh, you, I, I can guess that you were from a Christian background. Yeah. So where does, uh, I mean, why, why, why specifically you're practicing, you have taken up Krishna consciousness and this Vaishnav culture or why do you think Krishna is God? Yeah. Yeah, my mother, she was Southern Baptist, and so she, she actually was quite religious when she was growing up. Her grandmother raised her. So, but I wasn't so uh, into the Christianity. Uh, it's difficult to get into. Uh, it's just, 
in Christianity there were so many questions and not answers were not given. It was just kind of like blindly accepting and, and actually nowadays many Christians are not actually following exactly what the Bible says. Prabhupada approached many uh, even uh, 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 people of different types of faith but they're not actually following the laws of God. But religion means to follow the laws of God. So if they're not practicing the laws of God but they're claiming they're religious then what they speak they won't have any effect. effect. Yeah. So when, when I was hearing these people and going, I went to church a couple of times mm -hmm. but I, it wasn't like inter like you didn't go, you didn't take Krishna Prashad, you didn't feast, you didn't chant, you didn't dance, you sat there and one man stand, stood on the stage and he spoke but what he was saying you're just what I, I couldn't I could it, it, it wasn't attention grabbing. Mm -hmm. But you come to Krishna Khan, you come to Iskand Temple, they got halavo puri, they got uh, uh, samosa, they got chutney, they got paneer sabji, uh, they put what ghee on the rice so you smell. It's so fragrant, it's so nice. You'll never forget it. And 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 and, and also chanting and dancing 24 hours. You go to Vrindavan, such a beautiful temple, but you see all the churches all over the world vacant. No one, no one's going. I mean, there's a couple that are very popular, but no one's going. But you see ISKCON Center, hundreds of thousands of people are coming. Come to Mayapur, you will see all the pilgrims coming. Uh, lines going all the way back. Uh, so many visitors are coming. Mm -hmm. So you can't find that anywhere else. And that's why ISKCON is very popular. Then you, uh, Krishna, why, why Krishna is God, yeah? yeah? That's a very important question. So, I can, I can basically... Uh, say like I, I don't actually have that realization that Krishna is God but because Prabhupada has that realization and he is so sh firmly fixed and when associating with Prabhupada you can feel that Prabhupada is not a normal uh, 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 soul mm -hmm. and he speaks and the way he speaks and if you associate with him through his words, his lectures, his books you will find that what he's saying is true they, you, 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 some devotees are reading some and they say hey this is true yeah, yeah, uh, the body is continually going from boyhood to youth to old age. Then at the time of death, one accepts a new material body. Now, most Indians, they know this. Mm -hmm. Americans, they don't only have a few uh, idea of reincarnation. Mm -hmm. So he's saying that this is true. Yeah, I go from boyhood to youth to old age. So yeah, this is true. Then he's reading more and more and more, and then he's finding, this is also true. Devotee is saying, this is all, then they find that they're underlining everything. <laughs> but in, the, in, in, in Christianity or any other religion, you won't find like that. You will find all your answers here in Iskand. All your problems, all your answers will be solved here, nowhere else. Even if you want to taste tasty dishes, <laughs> you can find that here in Iskand. And so, so, so this, then it, then it says in the Bible, Mata uh, Prantanananyat. He said uh, uh, that I am the uh, the superior, the most superior truth. No truth is superior to me. Mm -hmm. So if Bhagavad Gita is saying that in chapter two and then that in chapter seven, then it must be true. Now it, it, it's a gradual process to understand this, and I'm in that process and I'm trying. But Prabhupada is firmly fixed, and by hearing from him, one can understand it's like what he is saying is true. Mm -hmm. So like that. Yeah, so it was a very nice experience talking to you mm -hmm. and uh, in an age where most of the people are chasing after this mechanistic way of life mm -hmm. I must say that it's very inspiring and also pleasantly surprising to see uh, someone like you dedicate himself to uh, you know spirituality and our culture mm -hmm. So most of our viewers are young people from India mm -hmm. Any parting message which you have for them? Yeah, while you're young and you're able to take advantage of this movement as soon as you can you take if someone asked me if I would change one thing in my life, I would wish I would have come sooner. So anyone young out there and they're, they're searching after happiness and they sincerely want it, you come to Iskand and you try it. You simply, you, you cannot tell someone the taste of honey. They have to taste it themselves. So Iskand is like that. If you want to feel the satisfaction, like I, I don't have to ask you if your hunger is being satisfied. You are eating and you know your hunger is being satisfied. So you can go and eat in many different places, but your hunger will never be satisfied. But ISKCON, they will satisfy your hunger. And, but you have to sincerely follow Shri Prabhupada's instructions as far as possible. And you will feel satisfaction, real satisfaction. And my humble request is please take advantage of this movement as, uh, uh, as soon as possible and, uh, and make your life successful. Thank you, Jay Krishna Prabhu, for Hare this Krishna. interview. Yeah. I'm sure our viewers uh, enjoyed it as much as I did. Hare. Thank you.